So I got involved in the local Republican club, which was pretty demoralized and beaten down, sort of like Republicans are now, New Jersey. And uh, I began rebuilding an organization with a commitment to tackling the town's problems and with a vision on how to do that. I talked about cutting spending, cutting taxes, um, pretty simple message. And I ran for office. Now, I ran against a three-term entrenched incumbent, and I won. I won an upset victory in 1995 that people said we couldn't win. Um, and I went into office in January of 1996. And, and the first thing I did, and, and remember, I was coming off of uh, 15 years in a highly competitive business. Kitchen cabinet manufacturing is about as cutthroat as it gets. There's no government subsidies for us, and, but an awful lot of government regulations. But I, I went into office, and on, on January, I had a meeting of my department heads. So I called these department heads together, and I said, ladies and gentlemen, I want three things from you. Bogota now has the highest tax rate in the county. We're putting a big burden on our taxpayers. I want three things from you. I want a 15 percent, a 10 percent, and a 5 percent budget reduction plan. Well, they all sort of giggled and, well, you know, we really can't do that. This is government. You can't possibly cut spending that way. And, and, and behind my back, they were saying, well, this guy's a one-term mayor, and uh, he'll never last long enough, and we'll just ride it out. Well, to make a long story short, two years later, I had all new department heads in Bogota. And to make a longer story even shorter, uh, 12 years later, I will have served three terms, been reelected twice with double-digit margins, and delivered on my commitment to taxpayers. And I learned in that process because I came into office and um, I had this private sector mentality. You see, I had had men that had worked with me for years. I knew them. I was at their children's. Uh, baptisms or their weddings or birthday parties. Now, they were not just employees, they were friends. We worked hard together. We were in a difficult business. My shop would be open in the summer. It was 90 degrees out, and we had to reach our deadlines. And these guys worked hard, but I was limited to what I could pay them, you know, what the marketplace would allow me to pay. But when I got into government, I realized that the government employees and the government contracts had no limitations like that. Every year, the pay raises would come out no matter what. Didn't matter how big the tax burden was. Didn't matter how the recession was. Three and a half, four percent, five percent pay raises like clockwork. Um, the best benefits on the planet, best medical benefits you can buy, paid for by taxpayers, and a phenomenal pension system. And also a profound willingness to blow out the door at four o'clock on the strike of the clock, no matter what had to be done and what deadline we had to meet. Um, I got to tell you, I really resented that. I really resented the fact that we simply raised taxes every year to fund these increases. And I had some fine employees in, in government as well. But overall, the mentality was one of almost abusiveness towards the system's ability to simply uh, burden taxpayers while those of those who were out there in the private sector were subject to all of the pressures of the marketplace and, and reality, in reality. So, uh, you know, I had a real personal sort of commitment to getting things under control. And I did that. And, and as you read my book, it talks about sort of my disappointments. When I became mayor in 1996, Christy Whitman was the governor. And Governor Whitman said that under her administration, we were going to reward efficient, uh, reward efficient towns and penalize inefficient towns. That sounds like a good model. I think everybody would buy it. If you run a good, efficient community, then you get be rewarded. If you're inefficient and corrupt or whatever, you're penalized. Well, that clearly was not the case. Um, as I came into office in my first year, I cut the town's budget by 10 percent in year one alone. I was confronted with a prior year deficit. I had to take on the unions. I talk about in my book taking on the police union in particular and others and challenging um, them in, 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 in arbitration, you know, the <sighs> I, I came into office and found out that an average patrolman without a four-year college degree coming out of high school at age 18 by the age of 25 is earning approximately $110,000 a year, 110000 a year, 120000 a year, depending on overtime. Phenomenal medical benefits, the best on the planet with no contribution at all, and a pension system that would allow them to retire at age 44 with 67% of their last two years average salary. By the age 44, if you're in the police force, you're a captain or a lieutenant, you're earning a lot more than the base of a patrolman. 
So I had people retiring before 50 years old with $100,000 pensions and medical benefits for life. And, and then coming to the bargaining table demanding salary increases of four and a half or five percent in a five-year contract. Now, 1995 was a relatively good year economically, but still not terrific and not certainly able to fund such increases. So I refused to capitulate. And one of my first jobs as the mayor was to take on contract negotiations with the police. And uh, I simply wanted the same type of reasonable discussions as I would have in my shop with my own men. I said, gentlemen, I've got, you know, 24-year-olds making six-digit incomes. I've got the best benefits. And I need help here. We need to keep your increases to below inflation. We need a modest give back on medical insurance. And um, of course, that was never going to fly. So we went to what's called arbitration. And on the local level, you, you, the government requires what's called binding arbitration. That's where those who are elected to govern sit across the table from a very effective bargaining unit, and you attempt to negotiate a contract. And if they don't get their way, you go before an arbitrator. And I went to the arbitrator, and the arbitrator awarded them a fabulous contract. And I, I went back, and I said, we can't even accept this, even though we're supposed to. So we appealed the arbitration. We went back to the state, what's called the PERC Board, and uh, Public Employee uh, Relations Commission, Committee. And the PERC Board, by the way, is pretty much stacked with labor union representation and government employees. And uh, even the PERC Board rolled, t turned the award back to, um, to the arbitrator and said, no, this is too much money. You can't give 4.5% a year for five years with no give backs and, and in this environment. So we went back to the arbitrator. The arbitrator then turned around and gave back the same contract again. Now, under normal conditions, any town in the state of New Jersey would have relented on that. And, and I said, no way. We're not going to do this. So we went back to the arbitrator. We went back to the perk board again. And then we went to court. We actually had to go to court. The police became so irate that they organized the movement across the town, and they put signs up on people's front lawns, and they had buttons that said, we support our police, purple and gold, the town colors. They bought billboards attacking me. They put out flyers attacking me for not giving them a contract. And I would go door to door and talk to people. And, and I'd say to them, well, what do you think you know, a police officer in town is making? And they'd say, oh, no, $40,000. say, 40? You got, and, I, and then we started publishing salaries out to the public to let them see um, what they were earning. Well, I won in court. And I got the contract that I wanted. It wasn't as good as I would like, but it was far more reasonable than any other town. I remained under all-out blistering attack for the rest of my first term. Um, simultaneously with taking on those unions, I was also taking on government programs. Um, I talk about in my book outsourcing the, the town's entire bookkeeping department to the private sector, outsourcing janitorial services, outsourcing garbage collection, insourcing certain things, um, bringing a private landscaper to maintain our parks at about a quarter of the price of doing it with our own employees. Um, and, and that's how I cut my budget for two years in a row and kept taxes level for two years in a row, which was, in reality, real tax relief for my community. So after four years of this tumultuous uh, you know, negotiations, and that's a nice way of putting it. I mean, I, Saturday mornings, I would have picketers in front of my house. This is no joke. The police would come and picket one week, the teachers union the next. The, it got to the point where I'd get up on a Saturday, and if there were no picketers there, I wouldn't know what was going on. Like, where are you guys? 